الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعليه وصحبه جمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته Okay so look I'll keep it real with y'all uh, We were having trouble <laughs> finding a topic because you know we've been busy we have some things coming up inshallah that we'll get into but actually one thing since this video is recorded a week before it comes out uh, we were actually just in the middle of a hurricane <laughs> You know I, I wanted to bring this up Man, yesterday man, it was like what eight o'clock. Man, I caught off a call by. We had an important admin meeting, and Austin's power went out. It's crazy. Now, literally, I don't know what did that sound like. Was that like lagging? In yeah, and out? he was lagging in and out. <laughs> you would leave the call, like, Austin. And the worst part was, bro, there was no service, bro. Like, oh my god, it was crazy. But then the power came back. Alhamdulillah, two hours later, all I hear is the fan, fan the fan cut on, and I'm like, <laughs> Reminds power's down, bro. <laughs> Dude, literally, bro, in Sudan, bro. This is then oh you just God. like you know exactly what's about to happen. It, low key, you go like feel it. Sometimes you're just sitting there when, like, when it goes chilling. silent, yeah. When and then everything <laughs> just goes silent. And then you just start seeing the fans slowing down. You're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's happening. All right, bro. Actually, no, no, no. When we went in 2019, this is when like things were kind of heated, right? The the airports were closed and stuff. Like um, there was like fights going on outside. The the Genjui, like uh, the militia, they were at their height. You know, cutting off the power, cutting off uh, the news, everything. Like you couldn't even get to the outside world. Um, there, it used to be on a time, literally. You'd wake up, it'd be like 11 a.m., 12 p.m., something like that. Bro, like 1 p.m., it cuts off. It cuts off all the way until like 8 p.m. at night, and you're just sitting there the whole day just having to, to relax, having to conserve your battery. In the heat. Yes, in the heat. Bro, I remember I had a Netflix season of All American, if you guys know that show. I had season one downloaded. I had to watch every episode. <laughs> I had to watch 16 episodes three times, four times over. And then when I got bored of that, I had to go on this guy's iPad over here and I had to go watch The Flash because I think he had like season one downloaded. And I'd just do that on repeat for a whole week straight while they were just cutting off the power for like eight hours a day. So you ain't got nothing better to do? No. No? Bro, dude, wait, you can't go right? outside. Dude. Bro, dude, I'm telling you, at that time it was bad. Dude, you remember when you came to my, you remember when you came over and we were in Sudan? Dude, and your stomach was, dude, your stomach was bleak. Dude, your stomach was bad. And the, how about I, yours? The, the, the power went out. Also went to the bathroom. He was like, dude, I got to eat. He said, dude, this is bad. <laughs> you know what's so crazy? When the power went out yesterday, I was also in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, bro. Or even when you just go, like, when it's normal and Sudan feels normal, you're just sitting there, you watch the power cut out, and, like, or you ever just go out, you're like, you know what? Nah. I'm sleeping outside tonight, bro. Look, listen, in, back in 2017, when Ramadan was still, like, in the summertime, and, man, I remember I was out there, we, were, we had a fast, and they would, they would cut the power every single day. Like you said, around the same time every day, and it wouldn't come back till after Maghrib. Like, I don't know what what the purpose was of that. I don't know if they were trying to, like, test us, like, you know, trying to make sure, like... So that you can't see... I know one of the reasons why they used to cut the power in 2019 is that so you can't watch the news. Like, you can't, people can't see what's going on. That's, that's crazy. That's a different level of oppression. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's a different level of oppression. Isn't that crazy, bro? They, they know they're doing something wrong. You know you're doing something wrong when you're trying to shut out the whole world from looking at exactly what you're doing. If you're trying to hide what you're doing, yeah, it's probably not doing a good thing. It's not facts, bro. And wait, 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 actually, hold on, hold on. That's a lesson right there for everybody. If you're trying to hide what you're doing, like if you, if you go sin in secret, you, you know you're not doing, doing, doing the right thing. And that actually was something that I thought about when we were at the Hood because you know how he was talking about Toba, right? Mm -hmm. um, and like the, the different actions we should take after we sought repentance, right? So um, something I like to think about is, you know, we would never sin in front of our parents. We would never sin in front of our friends knowingly. Like, okay, unless, you know, you're someone who's going out to drink or something and you're doing it in front of them. Okay, that's different. But I'm saying like a sin that you do in secret, you're never in secret. You're never by yourself. You're never really alone, Right. Sometimes we, you know, we may feel lonely, but when you're connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you'll never actually feel lonely. So when you do a sin that you think you're doing in secret, you're not thinking of Allah looking at seeing you at that time. Or else you would never do that sin. You'd never go through with it. But, but hold on. What, what did he say? He said he was talking about how, you know, we look at major sins, minor sins, to never look at it in that way. Rather, look at who you're sinning against. You're sinning against Allah. Mm -hmm. The one who has blessed you with so much. The one who has blessed you with... You know, eyes to see, ears to hear, legs to walk, hands to, you know, grab things, move, whatever it is. If if you were to count all the blessings of Allah, there would be no idea or no, you would not want to sin against him. You would not want to, you know, wrong, wrong yourself in front of him. You would not want to embarrass yourself in front of him. But that's exactly what we do. You know, it's recurring in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah knows that which you conceal and that which you, which you reveal, which really in your heart. Some people don't even realize what's in their own heart, but Allah mm -hmm. knows. And that's why, you know, like on the day of judgment, Allah's going to inform you about that, what you used to do. Because you might have been heedless. A lot of people, they go through their day, they don't think about what they do. 
They don't think about the repercussions of what they say. You they don't understand a little. Like imagine you're walking through your day. Oh hey, I, I love your sweatshirt. You don't know how that could change that person's life. You don't know how, like, you don't know how that can, that can make their day, that can make their mood. You don't know, oh, I love your smile, man. It lights up the room. Like, the repercussions of what you say, what you do on a daily basis, that little dollar that you give in charity to that guy, he might think, of, like, his whole world might have changed from that. And then Allah will inform you that, about that, what you used to do. No, that's so real. Like, Osman, Osman just spat, bro. He, that's facts right there. Like, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will inform you what you used to do. And sometimes you may even think, like, why would Allah have to tell me what I do? I know what I did. I lived, I'm the one who lived it, right? But then you're going to go back and you're going to see every little thing that you ever did. And you're going to see things that you never realized that you did. And you're going to have to answer for it without you even answering for it. Because you everything testify. else speaks for you. Everything yeah. else testifies against you. Not yourself. Because you're going to be bound to lie. You're going to be bound to make an excuse. And then you're going to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send you back. Uh, whenever he calls you out for a mistake that you made, if he ha if you have to be called to reckon, which is why every single Muslim who thinks about the Day of Judgment wants to be part of those that the Prophet ﷺ prays for on the Day of Judgment to enter Jannah without any reckoning. To enter Jannah without having to be called to account, to have, have to worry about which book their, uh, which hand their book goes in, right? Mm -hmm. Because regardless, if you go to Jannah, being asked, it, like it's going to feel like a, a punishment because what are you going to be doing? You're going to be fearful the whole like time that the day of judgment is um, upon you, right? And for some people, it's going to be quick. Some people, it's going to be a little bit longer. And whether you go to Jannah or not, even if you do go to Jannah, that long period, you don't want to wait that period. You don't want to wait any period. Think about, think about, it. Think about like uh, the day of judgment as like a courtroom. Who's the judge? Allah. Who's your attorney? You don't got no attorney. Wait, and going, I want you to think about the reality of the day of judgment, right? You know how when you go into the grave and you're, you enter the, the realm of the souls, the barzakh, right? The, 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 so, uh, the realm before the, before the day of judgment, right? Where the souls are kept. Okay, why is it that you're still going to be fearful on the day of judgment if in your grave you know where you're going? You don't know what you're going to be called to account for on the day of judgment. Even if you are par uh, promised paradise, you don't know. You don't know what could happen. Your grave may be expanded for you um, while you're waiting for the day of judgment. But the fact of the matter is that even the prophets who are sitting in their graves right now, feeling the 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 lightness of the battles, like the, um, the enjoying the habits that they're going to be feeling in Jannah right now, they're still going to be fearful on the day on the day of judgment. So we're nothing compared to them. So that's why it's like you the reality of the day of judgment has to really hit us a lot harder than um, than we make it seem. Because if not only the prophets who prayed their entire lives to be able to enter Jannah, but the Sahaba that we we follow their example as well would pray for months on end to make sure that their deeds were accepted, to make sure that their fasting of Ramadan was accepted. If they were fearful of their deeds being accepted and we go about our deeds being heedless, like this, like Osman said, we're heedless of our actions. We don't think about the repercussions. We don't think about whether they're accepted or not or how how focused we are in doing those actions for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or if there's any any ounce of riyah in our hearts, any ounce of uh, arrogance, because that little ounce could keep you away from Jannah. Yeah, and there's always... There's been a time in our lives where we've all been heedless, right? And a good example of that is you ever been upset? You ever been angry at someone or at something? And then you went ahead, you you did something that if you were in a normal state of mind, you wouldn't have been thinking like that. But at the time that you were doing it, you thought what you were doing was perfectly fine. Imagine you live your whole life thinking that, you know, you're going to go to paradise, that, you you know, you did good. But in reality, you had the wrong intention the whole time. You were you doing things. For, yeah, exactly. You never checked on yourself. You never reflected on yourself. You know, what will happen to you then? And that's the thing with heedlessness. And when you're heedless, it prevents you from getting better. You're never looking back. How can I, how can I, how can I do this better? How can I make my parents more happy? Or how can I do this? How can I, how can we have a better podcast? Things like these. Like when you're heedless, and this is the, that's the thing that like, it's talked about in like a lot in the Quran, ghafla. That's like the Arabic word for heedlessness. It's talked about a lot. Don't be among the heedless. But, but hold on. If you're if you're heedless, right? There's no reflection, right? And if there's no reflection, there's no repentance because you know it doesn't seem yeah. like you did anything wrong. If we're out here, you and I, right? Just, you know, regular Muslims. If we're not out here seeking repentance and being aware of the things that we're doing, like, who are we? What did the, what did the Imam bring up in the in the khutbah today? That the fact that the Prophet ﷺ, he swore by Allah that he made istighfar more than 70 times a day. And here, some of us, you know, we go days, months, years without, you know, repenting to Allah for the sins that we do on a daily basis. You know, I actually wanted to, I wanted to make a video about this, actually. Um. Something that I never, I didn't used to do as much is, you know, the, the athkar we say after, after salah, right? If you mm -hmm. say, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, Allah Akbar 33 times, right? 
-hmm. You're never told to to say la ilaha illallah, but la ilaha illallah is the strongest form of of dhikr because you're affirming, you know, the oneness of Allah. So I was going to start asking people, how often do you say la ilaha illallah? How often do you say the shahada? Because that's how you renew your faith. If you're ever feeling weak in iman, say la ilaha illallah. Affirm Allah's oneness, bro. Affirm it, know what it means, and also understand how merciful Allah is. Look how easy la ilaha illallah rolls off the tongue. You don't even need to move your lips to say la ilaha illallah. Go ahead and say it right now. You don't even need to move your lips. Subhanallah. Exactly, bro. Like you say subhanallah, you have to move your mouth. Allahu Akbar. Uh, alhamdulillah. Like, can you imagine? You're in your last final moments. You're about to die. You're very weak. You're in a weakened state. I don't know. Whatever it is. You're bleeding out. You got into a car accident. You're, you're bleeding out. You got, you got shot. You're old. You're sick. Whatever it is. You know, but saying la ilaha illallah could be the easiest thing to roll off your tongue because of how, how easy Allah made it for you. But the thing is... But you think you're going to die upon that without, you know, doing the right actions before? You think you're going to die upon la, la ilaha illallah if, you know, you were out here doing the gravest of sins that, you know, you were trying to do things behind the back of, you know, your Muslim brothers and things like that? Mm -hmm. Trying to hide from Allah? You can't hide from Allah. What are you going to do? And such a such a hikmah that you just said, like so so much wisdom behind what you just said. Because look, la ilaha illallah rolls off the tongue so easy. You could say it easily. With it doesn't even take one second to say it. But look, how come not every Muslim will die upon la ilaha illallah? Because not not the honor it is to die upon saying that word that you can be guaranteed jannah by just saying that someone who never was Muslim in their whole life disobeyed Allah their whole life, but they're given the ability to say that on the on their deathbed right before that they die because. Allah knew better than them what was in their heart, better than them what they used to do. He'll allow them to say that, to have that honor. Then you understand that you die is the way that you live. If and you didn't live by la ilaha illallah, there's no way you're going to die by it. And there's a dua that, you know, we, we should always say about, you know, um, for Allah to grant us a good ending, right? Because if we don't have a good ending, right, you know, that, that could be the, the ultimate start of, you know, your downfall, mm -hmm. right? Because... Um, no, I, and I, I love what you said because when you when you talk about good ending, it reminds me of like the verses in Surah Imran after the people after Uhud and like the battle at Uhud and there were people there asking like, bro, like how could this happen? Because they suffered casualty. And Allah says, don't think that the people that died in the cause of Allah are dead. Rather they're with Allah, Allah and they, you do not see. You don't, don't see. Know. So there's things, and then also Allah talks about like the hypocrites, the people who were who were closer to disbelief on that day than to Iman. This is exactly what he said. Those people, they said, Oh, if we knew there was fighting, we would have came with you. And Allah says, we, I, he knows what's in their hearts. And they say, they're they saying that which is not in their hearts. They're closer to disbelief than they are to, to Iman. And Allah, and Allah, they also said that, oh, if you guys had not gone, if you guys had stayed with us, you guys wouldn't have died. Allah says, then prevent death for yourselves if what you say is true. You're not in control. You're not in control to be saying that. This life's a test. You better show up when you got to show up. Like that's subhanAllah. SubhanAllah. And I, bro, I, I, I remember listening to that. I'm like, dude. I'm, getting, I'm like, I'm getting, high. I'm like, oh my God, bro. Allahu Akbar. Like, it makes you feel like, it makes you feel like it was, as long as you're doing things for the right reason, there's absolutely no way that things can go wrong. Mm -hmm. Ultimate or, faith. And that just reminds me, like, even the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, when Allah says, you know, they say that we're the fools, but yet they're the fools and they do not realize. They, yeah, exactly. Isn't that crazy? They yeah. <laughs> they, it's like those words that you see in the Quran that like affirm its power. You read this, you're like, there's no way anybody else could even say these words. Nobody would even think to say this stuff. Like, look, um, in Surah Al-Haqqa, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says something that when I when I first saw this surah and I was just reading it with my friends, we were on the we were on the game, you know, playing Xbox and whatnot, playing Call of Duty, and we were like, hold up, let's just read it from the Quran, right? And we all read this together in Arabic and we read the English translation. We went to, I, I believe it's like I 38 and 39. It's like Allah says, So I swear by what you see and what you do not see. Mm -hmm. Who in the hell would ever say, I swear by what you see and what you don't see. I, I swear by that which you don't know. I swear by the sun. I swear by the moon. I swear by the creation that I proportioned. Who else would say that? And like what you just said now, so prevent death for yourself. Who would think in their right minds to say this besides the one who created you? The one who has the power to do everything that you think that you can do. Like, and here's another thing I wanted to get to when you were talking about um, regrets. We're, we're heedless, right? I want you to think about if you've ever had an argument, if you were ever mad at someone, you argued with your spouse, you argued with your children, or you argued with your parents, you're always going to go through that argument not actually thinking uh, of the best situation or of the best responses. And then you'll go later either regretting what you said because there's a better response that just popped into your head and now you wish that you would have said that. But now you've caused that rift between you already and now you guys have to go reconcile for that. But see, if we're always thinking and reflecting on our actions, even while we're doing these actions, thinking before we say something, thinking before we do something, then we would never put ourselves in that situation. And that comes from what? That comes from taqwa. That comes from God consciousness. If we're <laughs> conscious of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask us about these actions, about these words that we're about to say, then we would think harder about what we're about to do. 
And you know what's crazy? SubhanAllah. Every time I'm in an argument, every time I'm in a heated situation or I'm arguing with someone or even it might even be you. I'm always, every time they say something, I respond instantly. No, no thinking. I'm, I'm, I'm never, I'm never thinking about what I'm saying. I'm just responding. I'm responding. I'm never thinking about what I'm, I, I just, yeah, da, da, da. like as soon as you say, I'm responding. Like I never, and especially like even when I'm over text, it's like, I see the message. I start, start typing yeah, like, real fast. I'm, I'm never thinking. I just realized that I'm like, yo, let's get, crazy. let's get a little personal real quick. Okay. So look, a couple months ago, right before the summer started, Osman was in Saudi and I'm here. Right. Um, so me and Osman, we were talking about some things we wanted to do for Dean tour. We were talking about like the direction of Dean tour. And I was just telling him how, like, um, how some things I felt like a little overwhelmed and I started, we started getting heated. We started to get arguing with each other, yelling at each other. And then out of nowhere, we both just calmed down. I was just like, what, what, why are we even yelling at each other? Like, what's the point? Where, where are we going to get with this? You know what I'm saying? So it was like that moment where I just thought I was like this yelling, this arguing is not going to get us anywhere. We might as well just have a civil conversation, talk about it like brothers rather than yell at each other because no. yelling is not going to get us anywhere. It's just going to make us angry at each other and forget Hold the on. purpose me, of our conversation. But let me tell you though, let me tell you though, I think about, I think about those types of situations differently. I think like I love those type of conversation. Whenever we get any of us get heated with each other, I love those type of conversations because you guys are probably the only people I'll ever argue with. What do you mean by that? Look, I love no no. <laughs> let me explain. Let me explain. You guys are probably the only people I'll ever argue with because you you like you guys are like the only people I'll ever hear out because I know you guys got my best interest. If it's a person on the street, I will never argue. Like I'll never argue with you. It's just it's just I don't I don't know you. you don't have my best interest. I don't know what you want want for me. I don't know where you want me to go, but I know you guys have my best interest, and I and I want the same for you guys. I want the best for you guys. So that's why I, if I think something's good and you guys think something's different, I'm gonna let you know because I want the best for you. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason. I, that, that's why I, like I'd rather I'll only ever argue with my brother because with other people, it, it ain't no. I don't gotta. I'm not gonna. I don't care. Like I don't. I'll be honest with you guys. We've gotten heated by having Islamic arguments. It's not heated like oh that we're mad at each other or anything like that, but we're like. When it's something Different Islamic, opinions, we want, yeah, yeah, we need to make sure that obviously one of us is correct. So we, we're trying to make sure we're doing all the research we can and we're bringing up our evidences and stuff. But we'll get a little heated because like one feels strongly about this opinion, one feels strongly about this opinion. So then you either disagree to disagree or you both take um, each opinion and see the see the wisdom behind it. Well, now yeah. I love those types of conversations because it helps me learn more. And I'm like, oh, shoot, I didn't even really know about that. But it's like this is what I always learned throughout my life. And now that I'm seeing this opinion, like, OK, I'm seeing how both of these make sense. It's like if you're if you're learning about the madahib, if you're learning about the different schools of fiqh, you're going to understand that, okay, yes, there's different schools for a reason because there's different ways to interpret wisdom uh, from the Quran and from the Sunnah. And not all of them, um, they're not necessarily wrong. Like this this is like the, what's it called? The depth that Islam has. Like there, there's some things that you'll see on the surface, but when you go deeper into it, there's so many different things that can uh, come from that. Uh, that's where you find wisdom. That's when you're, you're learning about the deen of Islam. And then obviously you're going to choose your route, but you don't choose in the manner of your desires. Because some people, I've heard some people say that, oh, if you just choose this school of thought because it says this opinion, you're following your desires. But like, in reality, you can't really tell someone that they're doing that unless um, you know you it's like the most opinion. minority opinion out there. <laughs> like, in a, in a, in a super minority, minority opinion, I wouldn't even take that as an opinion. Like, I need an opinion that's backed by other people. Because if you think about it in a career, because you have to think of a scholar, someone who's of knowledge, studied Islam their whole life as a career, right? Like you said, going to the mosque is like a sick person going to the hospital. So you going to a sheikh is like you going to the doctor. You're going to go to someone who has an opinion better than yours, who's been recognized by people who, who see this guy. He's certified. I've certified him uh, like other doctors or a board of scholars have I've certified this scholar to be of someone of knowledge and he could be trusted and stuff like that. So when you go to him and he tells you, OK, this is what's better for you. Why would you not listen to him? Instead, today, now we go on the Internet and we're like, we all think that we know what's going on. We think we know what we're talking about. And this is why I've always corrected people who've come to us asking questions. I'm like, bro, I don't, I don't have the answer for you. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you to come and ask me a question. I'm not going to tell you I'm a sheikh. I'm not going to give you a fatwa or anything like that. If anything, if I feel like I could help you, I'd go research for you. Then give you the, the, whatever I found, give you the link or give you the resource, the book or whatever that I found, because I'm not going to be responsible for relaying information that I'm not hundred percent about. And what's the downside to that? What happens if you go ahead and you go to someone who's not knowledgeable and you ask them questions and you follow them? What, what's What's the what's the damage of that looking like? So that person, the person who gave you that knowledge could be sinful for leading people astray, leading people to do the wrong thing, whether knowingly or unknowingly, Heedless because thing. it's your responsibility to not speak on that which you do not know. Mm -hmm. So if you go ahead and do that, you're already sinful, even if you didn't know that thing was wrong. Bro, and sometimes, That's the scary part sometimes, about it. Sometimes, wallahi, I'm the quickest, I'm the quickest to say I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm the quick, I, bro, some, <laughs> some people might think I'm probably stupid how much I say I don't know. I don't know. No, it, who who's um was the, it Imam Malik? It was Imam Malik. Yes, he was like, or 
maybe it was Imam Abu Hanifa. It was, it was a scholar, okay? Yeah, it was, it was a scholar. It was one of, it was one of the, the scholars, right? Uh, one of the four of the four madahib, right? And he was asked, like, I believe, like 40 questions or something. He was asked a lot of questions into every majority, single one. Said, no, yeah, majority, majority, he said no. He said, no. He he said, said I, I don't, don't know. know. Mm -hmm. And there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. You know, I'll be on TikTok live sometimes by myself. And, you know, sometimes the conversation will shift. People will start asking me Islamic questions, uh, seeking like photos. Oh, what should I do if I do this, uh, if this happens or whatever? And I'm like, hey, man, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But and people will show me respect being like, yo, I respect you for saying I don't know because like I don't want you. Yeah, to say you don't want to speak out of your own desire. Yeah. And plus, bro, like when you sit there and you say, I don't know, that just gives you an even more of a push to be like, all right, now I need to go research this. Then you go into another rabbit hole, of, you know, of seeking knowledge. So either way, it's a win win. Right. You know, and Allah's going to reward you for that. The fact that, you know, you didn't go ahead and just try to spread something from your own desires. And then the fact that you went ahead and tried to learn more about his deen so that, you know, you could be an asset to the ummah later on. Imagine the reward in that. But hold on, there's, there's this beautiful story that, you know, we heard here earlier. And I want to remind you guys of it. If, you know, the dangers of taking from someone who's not knowledgeable. Hmm. It was the, the story of the man who killed 99 people. Okay. Right? You know, he, he killed 99 people and he went out through the land and he asked a monk. Right. And by monk, what he meant by, as in somebody who worships Allah day and night, but yet he's not very knowledgeable in the religion. And he asked them, he says, I killed 99 people. Is there any repentance for me? Is there any forgiveness for me? And he says, no. So then he kills him, too. And now, look, he's, he's killed 100 people. So now he's going he's going out through the land again. And then he meets he meets an alim, He meets a scholar. And he asked them, is there repentance for me? Right. And then he, this guy having knowledge told him, yes, that there is repentance. Uh, there's repentance and there's forgiveness for you. And then, then afterwards, he went to go ahead and seek out that repentance. And then he later died on that journey. But hold on. Before we get into the the, the, the true meaning behind the story, because it was talking about Allah's forgiveness. The first, the main thing was the fact that he went to someone who, they both worship Allah day and night. The scholar and the monk, they both did. They worship Allah day and night, but one was knowledgeable and one wasn't knowledgeable. One told him that Allah will not forgive you for killing 99 people because, look, I want you to think about it. It's a, it's a major, major, major sin. To kill like, one person. Yeah, to kill one person. You kill one person, it's like killing all of mankind. Imagine mm -hmm. you kill 99 people. Yeah. So he tells him that there's no, there's no forgiveness for you. And then he goes to the next caller and he tells him that there is forgiveness, right? Like, and imagine, look, imagine, imagine he, he only went to that monk, right? The first monk, he told him that there was no forgiveness and he never went on that journey to go ahead and find a scholar or an alim. What, what would have been his fate afterwards? He would have been punished. Yes. Yeah, there would be no forgiveness for him because he wouldn't, he wouldn't, he, he, he thought someone was knowledgeable and then he was like, all right, well, there's no repentance for me. All right, let me just go ahead and keep on doing what I'm doing. Isn't that crazy to think about? Yeah. <laughs> it also makes you think of like, you know, when the repercussions when someone, of what you say, when I'm someone gets you. intoxicated, right? Their, um, their salah is not accepted for 40 days, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But do they tell you don't pray at all? No, they still tell you pray. They're going to keep like, if you ask any item, hey, I, I've been drinking alcohol, like, but um, I heard that if, if I've been, you know, if I've been intoxicated, my prayer is not accepted for 40 days. So should I just not pray? No, you keep praying. Bro, hold on. Because I, look, this is a little this is a little bit off topic, but that's one of my like my worst fears. If alcohol accidentally like comes in my mouth or something, I, like I would what do you mean? Dude, that, but that's different. Like, what do you mean, bro? Like <laughs> dude, I don't know. Dude, I don't know. Sometimes I'll be thinking, dude, whenever I get whenever alcohol's around me, like I'll be like in downtown. Like dude, I hate, dude, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude, I don't want to bring up whenever like alcohol's around me, like dude, it makes me nervous. I get like I'm like, I'm like, dude, just Bro's gonna trip on a pebble. I'm gonna trip on a pebble, dude. He's gonna trip on a pebble. Somehow, He's gonna start falling, land inside of a bar. It's gonna Break the glass and then the alcohol is just gonna <laughs> do. But it reminds me, dude. You remember you told me something? You saw something online and it was like, imagine you drink alcohol and then your the next day is your mother's janaza. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's crazy. Lot. Yeah, see now mm -hmm. that that's tough. I ain't gonna lie to you. That's man. See, but that's a scary reality. But, right? but, like but, if people, if people who did these types of things just like thought about something different in life than the pleasures that they're seeking then they wouldn't go ahead and do these actions. You know what I'm saying? It's like you never, it's, it's like some people never stop to think, does any, does this really matter? Does bro, this? Bro, like there's this, like, yeah, so many, uh, so many examples of this in real life, mm -hmm. right? Like you take one drink, you say it's going to be my only drink. You never did it before. Then all of a sudden it becomes a, a, a lifetime habit that ruins your marriage, ruins your household, ruins your kids' lives, ruins your life, you know, takes you to jail. Or another thing is, I remember one time I was I was working, I was like what sixteen at the time, and I was talking with one of my managers. He, he was a non-Muslim, you know. This guy like he loved he loved to talk about girls. He loved to talk about women, and he used to he used to always come to me. He'd be like, "Man, Osman, all I'm gonna tell you is 
30 seconds is not worth 18 years. And I was like, bro, what the heck? Why are you, are you telling, telling me that? <laughs> but like, bro, you got to think about it. Like it, you made you made an impulse decision to go ahead and fulfill your desires in such a short amount of time and not cost you a lifetime. Man, it's kind of luck. Repercussions. No, that's hard right lot there. Of, a lot of people be sleep. See, but like he's, he's saying that because he fulfilled his desire. Now, someone who does it in the halal way, they're not going to see that as their desire. They're going to see like this is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like, yeah, I take right. this, I take this with the utmost honor because, you know, a righteous child could lead you to Jannah, right? They could be your gateway to Jannah, right? So it's it's just a perspective thing, right? If you, because there are things that are halal for you before a certain point and then they become, uh, wait, what did I say? Things that are haram for you, haram but for then, you they then they can become halal for you. Become halal, such as being married and, you know, having children and stuff, right? So... Obviously, if you're doing if you do it before you get married, then you're gonna see the repercussions of that because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show you that this was not a blessing upon you. Now you now you have to make something out of it, even though you're not prepared for it. But when you're married, when you sought the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you pray to Allah for a righteous child, then when that happens for you, now you're now you're in a position, you're financially stable, you're doing well, you're prepared to be a parent, and uh you're wise enough to to raise this child to be upon the haq. So then you live life thinking like this is the most pure blessing that I can you know, get in this life. You know what's crazy? When we're speaking about like people uh, acting off of impulse decisions, there's a verse in Surah Shurara where Allah says, ma anhum ma kanu Would what they enjoyed be of any benefit to them now? Did that fun that you had, is it going to be any, be any benefit to you now? Like, and it's just like what I said. It's like, do people never stop to think like, does any of this, does this, does this really matter? Is this going to help me where I want to go? It is just, or is it just, it's just going to become a memory that you might even forget about. Mm -hmm. and like, in it was just a waste. Like literally the best way I can describe it, the most, the way I can communicate my idea to you is a waste. Mm -hmm. Would or, that enjoyment be of any benefit to you now? Or another verse is, in al hayat al dunya la Like this life, is, this life is just pure amusement. And no, that makes you like, think you don't want to, you don't want to, and I just, I just think about like the way I want to live my life. I don't want to be but, but a person on. who lags behind. Like, exactly. What does that even mean? Like this life is nothing but pure amusement. Like we, some of us, we really just go through life. You know, we, we just think that, you know, we're, we're here to live and die and that's look, it. Look, anything that, look, anything that you guys impulse buy, impulse do an action, right? Whether that's, you know, you watch filthy stuff on online, you drink alcohol, you smoke, you buy stuff impulsively, none of that stuff is going to feel enjoying after you've completed it. Mm -hmm. You're going to enjoy it for a little time and then you're going to be seeking the next pleasure or you're going to be seeking to do that thing again. I'm going to seek the oh. next thing that I should buy, the next material thing. I'm going to seek the next time I can go out and get a drink, the next time I can go out and smoke, the next time I can go out and watch uh, this, this crazy. porn and stuff. And it's, it's, just like, like, it's just, and like, it's just it's crazy because you, you have no substance in your life. You you seek all that all the things in your life that shouldn't matter and the reason why you're never going to elevate. The, never, the reason why you're saying, hey, I want to win. I want to go do this. I want to go achieve this in life. But that's your idea of fun. This is how you spend your time. It's something that Andrew Tate said. Well, I, it got me. I was like, he was like, man, my friends tell me, oh, let's go have fun. Let's go have fun. But their idea of fun is to go out to club. Yeah, it's everything is haram. So, That's, yeah, I remember that. All this stuff you guys want to do is haram. You guys want to go out and club. You guys want to go out and smoke and drink. But my idea of fun is going to start a new business, going out and doing this, going out and doing things that elevate me, that help me get closer to my religion. But how are you going to ever elevate in life? You're doing always doing things that have no substance, no use for you after you've done it. What is alcohol going to do for you after you've drank it? It's not. It's nothing. It's not going to elevate you in life. It's not going to make you a better person. It's not going to bring you more money. It's not going to help you start a family. Bro, the amount of times I get asked, like, yo, what do you do for fun if you don't drink, bro? Like, shut up, bro. <laughs> That's not the only way to live. Like, are you that stupid? Like, like with all due respect, you think that in life, the only way to navigate and have fun is by drinking? Like, come on, bro. Like, in the amount of times I get asked this question is crazy, too. Like, this is the society I live amongst. <laughs> bro. Like, when they when when people are like, man, this generation is cooked, man. Like, subhanAllah, like, real. Like, if, but it's not even this generation. That's all of humans. Without the guidance of Allah, you're cooked. Yeah. You're look, not. Look, you're look, you're look, cooked. I, know, I know you guys remember being in high school and or at work or whatever and people would talk to you and you know they'd understand that you're muslim now so you don't smoke you don't drink you don't commit zina and then they'd ask you, oh how do you not do this how do you not do this do you just do it for your religion i'm like i'm like yeah and then they'd be like i don't know how you do it i could never do that i'm like what do you mean you don't got no self-control you need these things to survive it's just how you live your daily life by seeking things that have no benefit to you in your life whatsoever they don't bring you any closer to the goals that you're trying to achieve but somehow you're saying you can't live without it man well lie bro these people think that we we wake up we pray we eat 
and then we go back to sleep. Like, <laughs> it's crazy, bro. It's like, a mindset thing. It's a mindset thing. Like, you're you're really trapped. Like, this yeah. alcohol is really controlling you. Look, and if you've been following this podcast, you would know that's exactly how what how we approach everything. That it's a mindset thing. Everything that you do in life, you can live your oh. life and prioritize Allah and, subhanahu wa ta'ala, bro. And, and speaking about impulse decisions, like, yeah, this is something that my mentor, like, years ago taught me. He was like, man, when, I think, when I'm thinking about buying something and wasting my money on something that's not going to make me money back, right? So, in other words, not benefit me in the future. Think about that with anything. He says, I usually wait about a week or two. If I'm still as excited about it, then I'll go ahead and buy. But while I find myself 99.9% .9 of the time, I'll never be as excited about it in the next two weeks when I, when, I, when I go to do that certain thing. So if you're about to go ahead and do a sin, if you're about to go ahead and buy something that's you know completely wasteless, just go ahead, delay it. Delay it. Delay it like how you delay your prayers and see if you're still interested in later on. You know, no, that's real because I've done like that a couple that. times. You know, I'll, I'll be at the store, right? And I'll be like, dang, bro, I should get this. Or like, it'll be something online. I'll be like, man, I want this bad. But then I'll be like, hold on, hold on. Not, not right now. You know, I don't, I don't feel like spending this money today, right? It's okay. So then I'll go and then I'll just leave. I'll forget about it. I'll be like, it'll be like, I never even saw that thing. Man, or exactly. It's, it's always that out of sight, out of mind thing. If you're not thinking about it, if it's not in front of you, then you're not going to care for it. You're going to understand that most of these things that you think that you rely on to live, you actually, you don't need them. This is also a big reason why you should always like just at least like travel outside of like where you live at and just like, you know, bring minimal things with you, just essential things that you need to survive. And you really see that, man, I don't need a phone. I don't need headphones. Uh, <laughs> I don't need my do. computer. I don't need it. Like a lot of things that you think that you need, a lot of things that you waste your money on at the grocery store that you think that you need, like you honestly, you don't need. And that's real, bro. Not even just grocery stores. It's like mainly it's like things you'll find on Amazon. You know, those little Amazon finds. You'll find little gadgets. TikTok, TikTok, yeah, TikTok, TikTok shop. TikTok shop. Or something. And then you go ahead and you buy something impulsively. Like you didn't really need it, but you saw, oh, it's pretty cool. The, the price is, it's all right. But then you don't go ahead and use it. Now, really, if you if you would have spent that that money elsewhere, you know, put it towards something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would value, such as mm -hmm. charity, then you would have saw the, the you would have reaped the benefits of it. Because, you know, the the things that we purchase, if it's truly to benefit us, then we'd see that benefit all the time, always. You know, my phone, I see the benefit from it because I can use it to listen to Quran. My headphones, and you said we don't need them. We don't need them, but I use them to, to listen to Quran. So you could use them in a way to benefit you. But then there's other things that you just really don't need at all. And you just go ahead and buy it because you think it's cool. You think it's the next big thing. And you think it's going to change your life somehow. But in reality, it doesn't do anything. You use it for like two days and then you put it down for the rest of your life. That's how it used to be with toys. But when we're kids, we don't know any better. When you're a kid and you're, you're just telling your mom, hey, I want this newest toy. But then next week you found, you found a new toy already. So now you left the other one and you're, you're begging Damn. your parents some, to buy some you Some people that never thing. grow up. Yeah. Like some people still do Some people thing. never grow up. They just switch from toys to other things. And then they try to find these, these little short-lived values in them. And then they're wondering why they're broke. They're wondering why they're, think, they're living paycheck to paycheck. You would have thought, man, did he? You would have thought 999 baby bottles would have been enough. But no, he needed a thousand. <laughs> Dude, <he just> died. <laughs> you would have oh, thought, thought it was enough. But now they had to keep going, man. Yo, hold up. I'm not going to lie. Based on, based on how this podcast went, they, hey, this is a lot better than I thought. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> this is a lot better than I thought. Very we should include, include the bloopers in the first minute. No, we should. We, like, bro, hold on. we need to be more like, I don't know. This was off the cusp. Normally, we come with a topic and stuff, but we were just like, we just started the thing. It took us like a minute uh -huh, to don't, figure don't, out. Don't make it sound just like that. Guys, we come with a topic, but yet we just go off of that. We're not out here coming with pre-written scripts. Yeah, no, no. I'm saying like. Normally we have like something in mind. Hey, let's talk about this. Like for, thinks, the, for the lower who, your gaze, for the lower your gaze podcast, we said, hey, let's talk about lowering your gaze and stuff like the struggle of that. But then this one, we were just like, what are we talking about? <laughs> Anyone who but thinks that so the the uh, what's it called? The realest podcast may come from having the realest conversation, bro. Nah, man, you good. I just I finished. All right, we can finish the podcast. Wait, wait, what were we gonna say though? I was gonna say anyone who thinks our podcast is scripted, come see me. Yeah. Who would think that who's gonna want to come see you? Who, 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 who would think that we script a thirty minute podcast? Dude, it sounded better. Bro, in a thirty my head. minute conversation, dude. What do you mean? Yeah, Look at all these movies. Some, no, no, no. Because some podcast, <laughs> wait, oh wait, some podcast, like y'all, y'all may go on a like a little, you know, ten minute just sitting like this, bro. Not, not saying a word. Y'all just be in your in your duffy, like in your feelings and stuff. Oh, hold on, bro. Hold on. Speaking of that, at least we're not. I don't know. With all due respect. I, we're not on those podcasts where we just be sitting there just yapping about the most pointless things, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time. And like, what, what was that thing that you said at the beginning of the podcast? Like, before we started the podcast? If something was going to be gay, it was going to be falafel or something. <laughs> I saw that on a podcast. <laughs> I, saw that. I saw that on a podcast, bro. 
You see, look, listen. All right, guys. Uh, I ain't going to keep on yapping. I'm done here. All right. With that being said, we're not scholars. We're still students of knowledge. Make sure to correct us if we're ever wrong. Share this with your friends and family. You never know whose life you can change by sharing this podcast episode. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All right, look. Like he said, we're not scholars. We're still students of knowledge. Let us know if you enjoyed this. Give us feedback on this, on this podcast. Um, and inshallah, by the time you guys see this, we will be on the ground in Egypt um, delivering humanitarian aid to the people of Sudan and to the people of Palestine. So inshallah, uh, interact with us for that. Donate wherever you can. We're going to leave the link in the bio, inshallah. And assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.